before nine o'clock on the program like it or not on a beautiful beautiful wednesday morning uh with uh don hector silva good morning once again all good right morning, brother morning, brother morning. brother hector um where you left off right there uh, and they they going towards uh Piquetle up to Piquetle. Piquetle. Well, no, it was after Georgeville. Then you come to Little Barton Creek. Little, Little Barton Creek. Creek, right? Yeah, okay. And then uh, we come to Iguana Creek. Iguana Creek. That's no. a, that's the one. This, the junction they use now to go up to Black Manetti. To the and to where the oil is being extracted. Right. The B and E, no? That's right. That is Iguana Creek. The creek is right nearby. You can see it. But as I said again, that name must have come from the animal, the reptile called iguana. There okay. must have been a lot of iguanas, so everybody said this will be Iguana Creek. And that's where Iguana comes. Then from there, you left Iguana Creek, you, you leave that place, you leave to that place there, Mount Hope. Famous okay. for bicycle riders, for our trucks that couldn't, couldn't climb that, that, that hill. They had to discharge their cargo down below and then go up with the truck, then the men used to back the cargo and reload the truck. Okay. That's a fact. You can still see the, the incline there that was cut down. The bicycle people had trouble with Mount Hope. They said when they get to Mount Hope, and that's where our great Tony Hutchinson from Esperanza beat them bad. When the Mexican, the famous Mexican name um, Calderon, defeated our boys, from Corozal to Belize, the best of best when Belize had. When they came to the west, Calderon come back, but the tank Hutchison Tony from Esperanza, yeah. right there. And when they got to Mount Hope, Hutchison just fly Mount Hope with his bicycle, went back to Belize, and he got there about half an hour ahead of the rest of the rest of, of riders. Okay. So that's Mount Hope. Then we go down to the other one after, named Bukut Palace. Do you okay. know where Bukut Palace is? No. Okay. Right down, as you go down Mount Hope, that whole area was inhabited at that one time by the Mosquito Indians called the Waikas. And okay. they named that place there Bukut Palace. From there, Bukut Palace, you move into Black Man Eddy. And this is a big story. How many people would know why they name it Black Man Eddie? Some say because one black man drowned there. That no. Mr. Blackman was a white man. <laughs> All right, there you who go. Who had mahogany works. Right. He went to the river, got into a dory, and he was told, take off your rubber boots. He disobeyed. He went, then the eddy, which is a very rough eddy, you know, that spins around, mm -hmm. capsized the dory, and Mr. Blackman, the white man, dropped in the river and drowned. So they named it Blackman Eddy. So I don't have nothing to do with the, with the coloration of someone's skin. No, it's, no, a, it's, 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 a, it's a white man who white was man. named Blackman. Black okay. And then he drowned there, and so the people there decided to name it. Black man Eddie. And you know, a lot of, well, I, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the residents of Blackman don't know the, the name, um, the why. And I believe that the, 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 the chairperson should be able to get to know the history. So, and all the chairpersons of, of these villages in this country should be able to know the roots of their, of exactly. their village that they represent and uh, so that they could tell their villagers in, when they have meetings or when they have elections. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. No, after Black Man Eddy, you reach to a point named Wari Head. <coughs> okay. That was the name, Wari Head. Must have been a Wari, which is a Picari or a, mm -hmm. that must have, somebody cut off the head and threw it, and somebody said, Wari Head. And it remained there until a Canadian by the name of Mr. Mel Holland came here and established one house for the poor right by now today Ontario so he requested my office that he would like to name as what he said just now mm -hmm. he would like to name it change the name Warrior Head to Ontario 
to put to the village. You know, at that time, Mr. Lemot and all the residents there. And they said, good, we will approve it. So it was changed from Warhead to Ontario. Then from Ontario, we have Davis Bank. Dan Davis, the black millionaire, yeah. owned that whole place that was lit like Christmas tree at night when he passed there. Lights all over the trees and everything he had. Beautiful. So Dan Davis, that was Davis Bank, Western Road. There was a Davis Bank, Northern Road too. And then you have a Davis Falls That's right it. now in, and the yeah, Hummingbird the fall. fall, yeah. And finally, we reached to tea kettle. Tea kettle. What could be the relation between that village and a tea kettle? Again, it is said that the people that used to travel the road, when they get to an area, they see something, and they call it tea kettle. And so it remains as tea kettle. Mm -hmm. So we reach up to there today, which takes up to tea kettle. Okay. At another time, we will go from Tea Kettle to Big Falls. And then the other one will be Big Falls to Borel Boom. And the other one will be Borel Boom to Billy City. And of course, I was born in St. James Boom. So that wasn't mentioned there, but it is right there close to um, Borel Boom. That's and, right, which isn't Borel right, Boom. exactly so. That's right. So, uh, <coughs> 107 settlements were on the Belize River, Old River. Mm -hmm. Makabank, and they have the Amin Mopan, and then the Makal. And those are all important landmarks in our history. That's right. They were the, the builders of this nation. It is not us. It is those people that produce to make Belize what it is today. That's right. But we tend to forget them. We see that, say, oh, then the old time thing. Oh, no. They are the foundation of Belize. All right. Good. Well, with that, we will we will just uh, take a brief break, and then from there we'll come up and wrap up um, and, and talk briefly about the the dispute, the ongoing dispute, and uh, certain issues that uh, we need to know. All right, you're listening to Maximum Radio once again, one zero four point one uh, Madlab Radio, uh, Facebook, and CTN Kayo Television Network Channel Three. And uh, I want to say the top of the morning to the people there from Isabella's Imports. And they have moved their location from uh, where they were behind the, uh, by the old mall. And they're now up front uh, inside of the Welcome Center area. We'll give you all next door to the Atlantic International Bank. And we'll give you more information about that as we continue on the programs uh, tomorrow and the following, up to the following weeks. Isabella's uh, Imports uh, Boutique moved their location. So we'll be giving you all that back tomorrow morning. Ten minutes before nine o'clock. All right, don, and Don Hector, um, the, the, the course that uh, everyone is set on is uh, moving forward towards the, uh, towards the ICJ and uh, all that. And uh, there, is, there is some information in where the people from Guatemala some years back they said that they did not trust the they did not have any kind of uh, contention or well, well not contention but any trust confidence inside of the United Nations and, and the ICJ is actually part of part of mm -hmm. that part of that and they're coming out from the New York Times in 1995 uh, this was an extract where it says in the United Nations for the four nations joined Britain in, in sponsoring a resolution supporting Belize's right of self-determination and calling for direct negotiations among Britain. And then it goes on to say that the Guatemalan constitution refers uh, Belize as part of Guatemala. And Guatemala said that the United Nations was not competent to decide on its claim to Belize. Now, why all of a sudden now they change their, their mind now and say that it's competent and they want to go to the ICJ after they have declared that uh, they believe that the United Nations is not competent uh, to make a decisions like that? 
because and then on the other hand now the the, the the foreign ministry from guatemala they put out advisory out there for the outer world to see where where guatemala is for tourism sake they say well it is bordered on this side by this one and that side by that one and and we are bordered by this side by belize so they know and they acknowledge that belize is a, is already an, 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 an identified nation an independent nation and uh, we are all by ourselves but now after that they want to say that they have a claim on us when they themselves had already acknowledged that we are already independent and separate from them jim the answer is simple guatemala has an immigration and a customs by benke viejo mm -hmm. why do they have that it believes belongs to them they are admitting that we are an independent nation mm -hmm. and they have to respect us as an independent nation so that proves that the claim is unfounded mm -hmm. and i want to call the attention of all the lawyers of belize all the politicians of belize that for god's sake understand the situation there is no claim valid claim by guatemala and i will prove it right now take a pencil and write it down read article 7 of the anglo guatemalan dispute all you have to do read it get it out of your computer and you will see what article 7 says and that's the only article that guatemala is using okay. they say that they agreed with the British, Guatemala and the British, mm -hmm. in 1859 to build a cart road, mule and cart, you know, mm -hmm. no car, no highway, a mule cart, a cart road between the sea, somewhere in Belize, you know, you specify, somewhere in Belize to Guatemala. Well, listen to the catch. Yes or use the existing rivers of belize okay if the cart road was not built the story doesn't end were the rivers used of course they were so there is no dispute absolutely lawyers of belize ministers of government politicians god read this thing it says, or use the existing river. Right. Guatemala used our rivers for over a hundred years, from 1859, pushing through the thousands of mahogany trees from Petén through our river. There were nine contractors there taking out logs from Guatemala. Don Emilio Awe, Ben Stewart, Sylvester, Gaynard, Marufo, Hulse, Julius Pat, taking old logs from Petit and shipping them through our river. So there is no dispute. Article 7 was fulfilled. But no. what has been happening is this, mm -hmm. that to blindfold Belizean, they are only using the cart road. They are dodging the other one of the articles says, or use the existing river. And that's where I would stay, and that's where the British told us in cabinet, I was in cabinet with Mr. Price, there is no dispute. Okay, but in regards, uh, in regards to what I read there from, from, from the extract from the New York Times, yes. where Guatemala had uh, verbally said, and, 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 and it was documented, that uh, they don't have any competent in the decision of the United Nations what they what they would make and uh, and and so that goes for us going to the ICJ. How all of a sudden now they change their mind and they want to go and everybody want to go to the ICJ. There is something up their sleeves. Something was and, offered and to them. Definitely, and yeah. something is offered to us as well. I don't know what is taking place, but I have put it forward personally to the uh, to the to the Belize uh, telephone directory. Mm -hmm. And they have in there, in the topography, and I read from 2016, uh -huh. it says in the topography uh, section there, 
uh, that Belize is uh, 8,866 square miles. When we know that Belize is 8,867 square miles, they said that it was an error. So they were going to correct it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was corrected uh, in this year's uh, 2017 phone directory, mm -hmm. but I will yet to see it. And uh, if it is not corrected, then that means something is, 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 something is fishy. Because of the fact that they, they have made this error from way back, mm -hmm. and then they haven't corrected it up to 2016. So one mile is missing from that. Uh, and that could be possibly the size stone that they well, had. Well, that is, that is what I'm saying. Yeah, that could have been. But, Jim, I want Belizean to have it clear. To go to the ICJ is not the option at this moment. Mm -hmm. Of course not. The option at this moment is for Belize to go to the United Nations Security Council. Well, that's what we have been saying all Every along. Every nation of the world that has a dispute like this, and worse, an, inv an invasion, as is occurring now, they go to the Security Council. They are the police of the United Nations. If you have a case, your neighbor, they broke your fence. You're not going to the magistrate, you're going to the police. And the police is the United Nations Security Council. So we have been wasting our time with this thing called ICJ. ICJ is a court that, that can be manipulated very easily by bigger powers. Okay. They have done it. All so right. I say, Belizeans, this is our country. This is an independent country recognized by 140 other countries. And so what is this fair? Yeah, what I we should do is seek new friends, strong friends, to come as we did in 1980-81. Bring our friends, our Caribbean brothers, Canada, India, Australia, to come to our support. I, I, I know here you mentioned United States. United States, you cannot uh, rely too much because they have investment all over the world. Well, thank you very much. <coughs> thank you. And uh, with that, <laughs> Don Hector, we are stopped because of the time right now. And of course, it was indeed a pleasure having you. And we will definitely look forward to have you back here on the program like it or not. Thank you very much, Jim. That's right. Thank you very much, Costa Salazar. That's right. That you invited me to be here. And it's a pleasure because we have to throw light uh -huh. to our brothers and sisters of Belize. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you very much. And once again, have a nice day, everyone. Don't text and drive. Always remember to buckle up. You have been listening to the program, like it or not, on a beautiful Wednesday morning. I'm Jim Arnold Rabun. I'll be with you tomorrow morning, same time, right here on Maximum Radio.